Um, our question today is, what does it mean to have hope in something? And I'm reading from Romans 15, 12, and 13. And again, Isaiah said, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will hope in him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Jesus, you are our hope. You, you know what came to bring us eternal life, and thank you for coming. Help us to share your hope with others that need, that need your hope, Lord. And Jesus, and we pray, amen.
couldn't look at her. I love my girls. Beautiful job, honey. Thank you. If you'll be turning to Romans 8, we're going to look at uh, Galatians uh, 5 in a minute and 1 Timothy 6. I don't know if you want to flip over there real quick, but we'll be touching those as well in just a minute. I've been like a puppy dog with two tails waiting to do this uh, sermon, this chapter. I love this chapter. This is my all-time favorite chapter. But there's some recent events that have occurred in the news that I'm going to touch on today. And I'm going to use, I'm not, I'm going, I'm going to certainly share the word of God, but I'm going to use this a negative news event to teach an unbearable truth. So I want to get right on it this morning. If you'll turn, please, to Romans, and I'll, I'll join you there. We're going to start at the first verse through verse 11. 1 through 11, beginning. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. And what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own Son in the likeness of the sinful flesh. And as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the Spirit is life and peace. But the mindset of the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who has raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. That's a great word, isn't it? Several of you weren't here last week and did not hear the clear message that we shared together about the need to overcome the, the, the sin nature that we inherited from Adam. And anyone who rejects the truth of the gospel lives in this living death that controls them until they someday do accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior or until they die. Satan holds them in a bondage that they struggle from crisis to crisis and from sordid event to sordid event until Satan ruins their life to the point that perhaps they die. Even those of us as Christians, we still have that old nature within us. And, and we literally have to subdue it every day. We do that by praying multiple times a day, spending time thinking about God, reading our Bibles every day, and practicing Christian behavior with one another. But unfortunately, the truth is, we do fail along the way, most every day. Some more often, merely. Our flesh, our old sinful nature, can rise up if fed more often than our spiritual self. Turn to Galatians 5, 6, 5, 16, and 17. Look on the screen. will be another way of doing it. I want to read it off of a sheet that I have prepared. I want you to see what, what the Bible says about this. I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the spirit, and the spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you don't do what you want. We are born into this simple nature, and it resides with us the rest of our lives. But when we become a Christian, the Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Godhead, resides in each and every one of us as a Christian. And it is up to each and every one of us to feed our spiritual self. 
Look on the screen for this, for, for this scripture. 1 Timothy 6, 11 through 12 says, Now you, man of God, run from these things, but pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight for the faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called and have made a good confession before many witnesses. Here Paul is telling Timothy to pursue the good things of God, to, per, to put away from him the, the evil of this world and to make the good things of righteousness a part of his daily life. He is saying to Timothy, and, and, and for you and I, please, to understand that, to pursue to chase after the godly attributes and make them a part of our lives. And later he goes on to say that physical exercise is good, but spiritual exercise is even better. So back in our passage in, in uh, chapter 8, Paul is telling us that we are saved and we will not be condemned before God. And the Greek word that he's using in verse 2 is the word L E Theru. And it's written in an aorist active tense, which means that we are set free. I like this, Keisha. And it says we are continuing to be set free from the dominion of sin or the domination over us of sin. We are set free and we are continuing and continuing and continuing to be set free. So it's it's an ongoing action of being set free. Our freedom is, is once and for all experience of being set free from the penalty of sin. The problem is, our flesh is weak. Listen to this. It's going to make a difference in what we talk about later. And what we pay attention to, and what we intake into our minds and our thoughts and our thinking, and what we dwell upon, and what we spend time contemplating upon, is what feeds either our soul and spirit, or our old sinful nature. Which one becomes stronger depends not only on what we contemplate upon, but what we act upon. And I've told you before that whatever you're thinking about is what you're, what's going to produce your action. You with me on that? Okay. I hope you see the handwriting on the wall here. It's, it should be quite obvious that our spiritual rebirth of the Holy Spirit is in hard contrast to the old simple nature that we have. And therefore, there is always a war inside of us telling it, trying to tell us what to do and how to respond to events that are negative to us. Let me say that again. Our, our spiritual self and our old simple nature are in hostilities against one another of how to react to situations and circumstances especially when they're negative to us. Our freedom from the penalty of sin does not exclude us from this turf war that's within our spirit and how to react to this and that. And, 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 and I've told you before, uh, Russ, you maybe have missed this before, but it's, it's this process of daily sanctification where we need to be in daily contact with the Lord and, and communicating in prayer, reading our Bible and doing those things that we do, daily sanctification. Again, that's why I keep pressing the theological understanding of an inherited sin nature from Adam. Therefore, we are born into this world with an inclination to want sin. Now, you saw my grandchildren this morning. They're just as cute as a button, sweet as all get out. Not quite as loud as Keisha's grandchildren, but almost. <laughs> But nobody taught that two-year-old how to fight her sister. Since she's been 18 months old, she has fought her sister like a tiger every time her sister takes one of her toys. And most of the time, she wins. You don't have to teach a child how to hit, bite, or even lie. Nobody had to teach them that. They do it naturally because they have a sin nature. But those of us who are in Christ, those of us who have the Holy Spirit of God in us are not condemned to a devil's hell. Yet it is our responsibility as a child of God and a born-again believer 
to daily reinforce the righteousness of God in us and to compel ourselves to stay close to God and to participate in loving others. And to participate in loving others. When we do that, then we are controlling the old sinful nature within us and distancing ourselves further and further from the succumbing to the temptations and the inappropriate reactions that we face every day. That's what we understood from our lesson last week, and that's, and, and that's what we're going to understand in our verse uh, 7 today, is that our sinful nature is hostile to the Spirit of God that is within us. Now, I've never heard Sandy say that she's been out on the chat rooms in the internet. Maybe some of you have not been out in the chat rooms and comments on the internet either. But I'm here to tell you that there are a lot of people out there that are hostile to Christians. I'm going to give you an example up here. Bring that up for me a little bit, please, ma'am. This is uh, Cameron Burr. You used to, now I know, I can't help the, the print on this. Cameron Burr, <clears throat> Full House, if y'all ever watched that show, Full House had those little Olsen twins on it all those years. She does a lot of uh, Hallmark movies. And she made a statement about two weeks ago, maybe three, that she loves doing Hallmark movies that have traditional marriage views or traditional marriage uh, principles. She has had a storm, a storm of, of, of negative comments. I'm sure from the view on, a storm. She's had to unfollow some of her friends, some of her co-stars that came back at her about traditional views. Honestly, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are many out there who don't want to coexist with Christians. They, want, they don't even want us to exist around them. Why is that? When a person has reached the point in their life that they don't want a Christian around them, it is because they have become evil and darkness has filled their soul and we are light bearers. And we stand in contrast to them and they are ashamed of themselves and it offends them that we are in that stark contrast with their evil. She's just an example of what's happening all around us. But the chat rooms and the comments are all out there as well. I, I, I've had to stop, Marissa, I, I know you're glad, of, of commenting on things out in the, in the world when I see something like what Cameron Burr is going through. Because I, I also get this storm, eight pages I've gotten before, of negative comments to me telling me to shut up. I don't need your Christian views. I wish you would die. I've read them to you before. I've shown them to you. So our passage today, if anyone doesn't have the spirit of Christ living in them, it says that they do not belong to Christ Jesus. They're lost. They're unsaved. And frankly, they belong to the devil until they will finally listen to the truth of God and accept the free gift of eternal life that God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ, offers. Amen. Only Christians have spiritual life. The unsaved have spiritual death. And they live a hollow life. Now I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. I literally hate what I'm about to tell you. I hate it as much or more than you do. But I ask you to bear with me as I show you this character, go ahead. You know that the news events this week, we lost a precious child. I'm sorry to show this to you, but I need to make a point. Go to the next one. This guy looks kind of fun looking, doesn't he? This is the guy. Go to the next one. Oh, no, go, go back one for me. Notice, notice he hit dynamite on, on his hat. 
blowing up. Go to the next one. He works at Barry the Lie. He was a former drummer at Walmart and Albertsons, whatever that means. He speaks alien. Go to the next one. Planet Namek. <clears throat> went too far. Planet Namek. Now, you're thinking, I know what you're thinking. Pluto, Venus. No, this is a hard metal rock band. Metal rock. Militant music. With wonderful names of songs like Arm Pittsburgh. Where are we? Okay, you, you need to go back to it. Okay. So here we're saying uh, musician, metalhead, love is stupid and, and not to mention completely asinine. Now here he is holding a baby. Now he's been in a relationship since the 90s. So this is probably his baby. Go to the next one. Okay, that was the one here. Go to the next one. Okay. This is what he's transformed into. Now again, I, I'm not even suggesting to you that he is a white supremacist. I'm not suggesting that. All of these things that I'm showing you are transformations, and I'm not saying that any one thing has anything to do with another. It's the transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see what's happened to this young man. You cannot let your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren evolve like this. Look for the red flags. Look for the red flags. One may not lead to another. But if they do, heads up. Okay? So now he's starting to look like characters of his metal bands. Go to the next one. Transform from that other guy. This is one of his friends. It's one of the few I can show you. At least most of her body is inside of her tank top. The others were not by any means. This, this is what she chose. Out of, this is her media picture. This is, this is her media picture. And those others that I were talking about that had most of their body hanging out of their tank tops, that was their media picture that, they, that everyone sees. Go to the next one. Oh, you're going too fast for me. Okay. Uh, let me. Let me ask you for them. I don't know what was before it. Go back. Okay. Let, let me ask for it. Go ahead. Okay. Now, again, don't, don't, don't. We're not trying to judge anybody. I just want you to see the transformation. Because the point I made to you recently is that you are what your friends are. If your grandkids are hanging around these kind of people, I promise you there's going to be a problem. There's going to be drugs involved. I promise you. There's going to be things that will happen. I promise you. But I'm headed somewhere. So go to the next one now, please. That's the one I'm going to pick on. She says, the poison in my head becomes the poison in my veins. There's something we don't want to put on our sign out front, Lois. Okay? Go to the next one. <clears throat> next one. Now, these are her tattoos that you couldn't see earlier. This is a dismembered body. Blood. Head cut off. Short hair. Dismembered arm. These are not tattoos. These are wounds. Arm falling off, being cut off. My point here is, again, you are what your friends are. What you put into your mind and thoughts, what you dwell on is what you're going to do. Go ahead. This is also the media picture of one of his friends. And if you don't know what the middle finger means, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Go to the next one. This is also the, the picture of, of one of his friends that's on social media. This, this has to do, I wasn't sure what that was, but it's a, it's a militant metal band, a militant metal band uh, name. Of course, there's barbed wire under her eyes, several piercings. Again, that's that's an individual choice. I may not like it, but it's an individual choice. This is a serpent with a dagger sticking through its head. This is an angel with a military machine gun. 
I think that's the last one. Go to the, go to the next website. These, the, again, the point that I'm trying to make here is that, that, is that when you see these kind of red flags around your family members, I, I, those are the kinds of things you are what your friends are. That's, those are red flags. Please, heads up. Please notice what happened. I just wanted you to see the transformation. That a man would drive up in the driveway, take a six or seven year old out of the yard, and, and according to the police, within one to two hours, he had taken her life. Why? He had his own baby. Would he want somebody doing that to him? But when you're evil, that's what happens. You don't think like common people. You think with evil. You know what, please? I'm just trying to show you that the world, I'm, I'm telling you, things are happening. Things are moving forward. The, the, uh, in the last two weeks, last 10 days, I believe, uh, the UN has voted to decolonize Israel and turn it over to Palestine, to the Palestinians, to make it Palestine and to run the Israel out of their country. You see the vote there. You see that vote. I'm just telling you. The world is in an upheaval right now that makes no sense. Go to the next one. So what's coming up right now is that uh, Israel was sanctioned or, 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 or condemned 17 times in 2020. The rest of the world is all, the whole world is all hunkered down with the, with the, with the COVID uh, pandemic going on. But the UN condemns Israel 17 times in 2017, but only, I mean 2020, but only six times to all of the other countries in the world. But 17 against Israel during the pandemic. Go to the next one. Apparently that's not coming up. And this next one, whether it comes up, is, you remember the unrest that was, I think, last week uh, when uh, uh, USA uh, uh, won the uh, soccer game over Iran in the World Cup? There was a lot of unrest in Iran. Well, Iran admits to killing 200 people. But the UN says it was more than 300. What I'm trying to point out again here is that this this world is beginning an upheaval. Things are going in the absolute wrong direction. Go to, go to the next uh, page. This makes no sense. Evil is arising. Even our own Congress last week voted a new law outlawing traditional marriage as the law of the land. As a Christian, you must stay strong and focus on living our lives honorably. We're really on this earth for just a little while. It, it's just a little while. I'm grateful for nearly 94 years uh, of Lorraine. I visited uh, my little friend who's been here with us. Uh, she's 99 years old. She had a uh, stroke, no, not a stroke, a blood clot in her stomach. And she's, she's bedridden now. <coughs> Those are the exceptions. We're just here for a little while. So what we do while we are here lays up for eternity our eternal rewards forever and forever. Lay up our treasures in heaven where they will, we will enjoy them forever and honor God with, with our blessings. That's our focus, people. I love you guys, and I'm trying to share the truth with you so that you can have more and more rewards in heaven. Therefore, I'm just encouraging you and, and, and just wanting to bless you with, with the understanding. Stay strong. Our world is going to go nuts. It's scary. We've been waiting centuries for this, for this period of time. It's happening, and it's a little scary. Stay strong. Live for God every day. And you will receive God's blessings now. And you will receive them in heaven to come. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Bow with me. Father, it, it is scary watching all of this happen. It's, it's scary to see each of these things developing right in front of our eyes. We, we thought, Lord, that we just couldn't wait 
till you brought your kingdom to us, that you blessed us with understanding of the kingdom. And, and yet when we see all of these things happening right in front of our eyes, it's scary. So we're just asking, Lord, that you would bring glory to yourself and glory to your name and, and that all of these things would bring praise to your holy will through our lives and how we live our lives. We want to give you that glory and that praise and thank you in the most wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to sing at least a couple of verses. If you have time to pray or you want to talk with me about anything, please let me know and I'll meet you right here.